Hi right, folks, George Shively back with you here on a new project. This is a 1982 42-foot post um, that we're going to be bringing into uh, this century. Um, some really old gear on it. Uh, although that Ferrino VX1 doesn't look old, that's over 10 years old at this point. So uh, probably closer to 15. So because that's the original VX1 series, not VX2. Of course the R21 double X that goes back probably closer to 2022 20, years. So more importantly than that, if you look up inside the overhead box here, folks, this is what you don't want. Okay. Uh, th there's, there's, this is just, you don't want this. This is a mess. We don't know what's what, who's where, and uh, you just, you, you don't want this. So um, while yes, everything turns on, this is just, this doesn't work, not acceptable. So um, we've got uh, an autopilot um, as well on the, uh, on the boat that is gonna need to be uh, replaced. That is right over here. Uh, that's the original Furuno nav pilot. That is going to need to be replaced because I believe the brain got doused with water. So, and uh, stand by, we'll take you up top. Back with you again, folks. Here we are on top of the post. Um, there's an old Humminbird GPS antenna. Boy, is that thing huge. You know, that goes back a few years. Uh, to your far left over there, that's the BBW GPS for the Furuno NavNet VX1. The R21 Deluxe antenna, Hailer speaker. Uh, we've got a full mix TV antenna. It's another thing you don't want to find. Um, and this is something we knew about and we need to address because this is not good. This is actually a 110 volt circuit for um, an aft facing halogen light. It's like a, Anyway, I just kind of want to show you what things look like here initially as we get going here. Um, we're going to be replacing the gear up top there with a 16 inch Garmin in 86-16. So we're still going to hang down, um, but we're going to take the other equipment, the um, VHF and the depth sounder, of course the depth sounder will be part of the 8616 and we're going to put that above in the overhead box and maybe make a solid panel for that. So I think it'll look a lot nicer and probably be more workable for this boat because I don't know really that the way that overhead box is right now is going to work too well. But stand by. We're just getting started here, so we'll be back soon. Hi, right, folks, back with you. Uh, got some work done here. Uh, by no means are we done, but wanted to show you kind of the overhead here. This is back to um, an area where we can store things up here as the owner's belongings. Got our wiring uh, you know, nicely tucked in in the back. Um, everything's wire tied. Um, nothing's going to be inside of this box. Uh, going forward, it will just be a storage box. Really the only thing that we're going to have here is our uh, ICOM 506, which is integrated to the 8616 XSV uh, via NEMA 2000. Um, our autopilot is going to go down um, in this area, actually on that shelf right there, keep it out of the water, uh, because previously it was located down on the floor inside the helm and it got wet, which is not good for electronics. You'll notice right there is the microphone for the VHF radio so we don't have a mic hanging from the ceiling. It's a whole lot easier to grab if you're sitting at the helm right there. Um, that is a option on the 506 and a nice one in a situation like this. Just keeps it cleaner um, and easier to get to. Um, we also did a lot of cleaning up inside the helm here. You'll see that we've installed a new um, 12 volt fuse panel there. Before there were just the positive and the negative. And yes, back in the day, positive was black and negative was white. 
um, um, bus bars. Um, didn't know what was what. Most of the stuff was not fused and was not good. So we are changing that up a little bit so that uh, if there is an issue, it's easily discernible what is what and um, you know, just a whole lot easier to service. Uh, we've wound up some wires here, kind of organized some things a little bit. Um, we've got the hard top almost done. Um, still working on that. We have the new uh, radar up top, new um, hailer horn. We've got to do some work as far as on the back side up here, uh, replacing a quartz light and a new nav light for the uh, bow of the uh, hardtop there, forward part of the hardtop. But we're getting there. Um, we've removed the old pilot that was here. The new pilot will be going in in that uh, general location. And um, just making some headway here. Um, and just kind of wanted to show you where we're at thus far. Um, also from the back side, you'll notice we're, we're not done with our wiring yet, but this wiring will be tucked up tight here. Uh, not too tight, but snug so that everything is nice and clean. Also the wiring on the back for the VHF radio. Um, nice and clean and snug. Um, so very important. The wiring is actually more important than the actual device itself because if the infrastructure is not right, uh, we got problems. So just want to take a moment and show you where we're at so far. Stand by, we'll do that. Hi right, folks, we are back on the post. Just wanted to give you a, a heads up here as far as how things are looking. And we are wrapped up with the navigational end of things here. And I uh, wanted to show you how the Garmin turned out. Really nice. Uh, it's, Excuse the, the flapping there on the Garmin screen. That's a effect of the video. Um, but we have all our data there. Uh, obviously, GPS speeds at zero. Our heading, GPS heading, our heading from the compass, which obviously is very different. Uh, depth, time of day, of course, position. Uh, as well as our um, VHF. We also have a VHF downstairs to facilitate having a uh, intercom between upstairs and downstairs. We use the remote mic uh, version so that the mic is down there uh, hanging up top. I think we talked about that before. We finished the installation of the new autopilot. Um, so we've got a new 711C autopilot uh, installed and uh, that's uh, just yet to be sea trial and then that'll be uh, up and running. Um, kind of cleaned up the counter here a little bit. If you remember this used to be over here right in front of this and it really just didn't make sense so we cleaned it up got all the crud off the counter uh, acetoned it and relocated it over here and now it actually stays put um what else uh we put on new vhf antennas uh both port um, and starboard sides uh, that's the owner installed uh, wi-fi antenna there on the uh, vhf antenna so we did not do that but the owner did but that, that's all right uh, so we got new VHF antennas. Um, we have a new light on the top, which is right here. That used to be a quartz light. Uh, it's now an LED light. And if we look up top, you'll see the new radar uh, and uh, just kind of a cleaning up of the top side. There were antennas up there previously that had no function, so they are gone. So uh, the other thing that we added too which I think is really important. Um, and I brought this to the owner's attention. Follow me as I go down the ladder here. Um, is an EPIR. I said, it's probably the best thing you could ever have on your boat. And uh, he agreed. And there's a category one 406 EPIR. So that in the event of a major problem, uh, life or death, you can set that off and you have your best shot at getting help when you need it. Uh, oftentimes when you don't have the clearest mindset. So you can see from the top side there is the Garmin four foot array and uh, that's about it. So other than doing the stereo, which we have yet to do yet, this installation has taken us a little bit longer, but that's okay. I want to do it right once rather than have issues. Um, we uh, 
want to do it right, take our time. So we're going to do the stereo next week. But wanted to show you how this wrapped up here as far as the navigational end of things. So again, the EPIRB there and we're going to climb up the stairs one more time because we got to close things up. And the nice thing about the stereo is that in this application, we're using a uh, fusion stereo. So we will have the ability on the uh, 16 inch screen to control the stereo up here so we don't have to go downstairs. Presently, there's no control for the stereo up here. So that'll be real nice. So as always, George Shively, South Shore Marine Electronics. You can reach us at 216-407-6553 or by email at southshoremarineelectronics at oh.rr.com. Hope you enjoyed.